Welcome back. Australia's completed another trade deal, this time with the UAE. And joining me now is the Trade and Tourism Minister, Don Farrell. Appreciate your time. Uh, interesting that you noted um, we did this, we did this quickly. We're willing to negotiate. We're not the problem. A little hint towards the EU, maybe, that one? Well, we remain open to have discussions with uh, any country uh, that would like to enter a free trade agreement with, uh, with Australia. Our whole strategy since coming to government is... Uh, diversification. So the more we can uh, negotiate and mm. reach agreement with other countries, the better this country is going to be. So did you find with the, with the EU compared to any other country or system, I guess, or block, that there were too many areas they said, if you don't do this, it's not happening? Too many red flags, if you like? Was that with the difference? The, with the UAE. With the EU. Oh, with the EU. Um, look, the, the difficulty with the EU, and this is a problem they've had with every one of their agreements is, mm. their, is their farm sector. Um, you know, we were looking for a good deal for our farmers in the, in the EU. The offer, the offer never came. Uh, contrast that with what we've done with the uh, UAE this week. Mm. Uh, we're getting all of our uh, sheep meat, all of our beef, all of our agricultural products into the, uh, into the UAE tariff-free. 99% um, of all of our products are going to be entering uh, the UAE tariff free. That's a really good deal for Australia. So in the trade deal as well, there's a provision on promoting labour rights. The unions are pretty critical of this. I mean, it seems pretty token when the UAE is considered by many as a, a bastion, essentially, for modern-day slavery. Uh, look, uh, we um, uh, have got a, uh, a document that will be released. I'm very confident that when the... Uh, all of the parties uh, look at that document, they'll be satisfied that this is a very good deal for Australia and mm. for the United uh, Arab uh, Emirates. Um, um, I'm very satisfied that the agreement that we have negotiated is the best standard that any country has negotiated with the UAE. Okay. We talk about the labour standards, but there's provision here for Indigenous, um, uh, indigenous businesses to get... Uh, um, good treatment under the UAE, uh, there's a gender clause, there's a sustainability clause. So this is a, a very, very good deal and it ticks all the boxes, I think, in the sorts of things Australia wants to see in our uh, free trade agreements. OK. China, um, the big one to go there, still on tariffs, rock lobster. China is now saying it wants new arrangements for testing and monitoring. Would we do that? And does this indicate this is many months away now? Uh, look, look. I hope it isn't, uh, Tom. Um, this is the one remaining uh, item that we have not been able to get back into uh, the Chinese uh, market. You'll recall when we came to government uh, more than two years ago, there was $20 billion worth of trade impediments. We've whittled that away now to something less than $1 billion. Mm. Uh, lobster remains the um, only outstanding product that we haven't been able to get in. Um, would you have an issue with testing and monitoring and how quickly could it get up? Look, these are issues for our agriculture department and, of course, discussions with the Chinese, uh, uh, the Chinese equivalent. Mm. Um, we're going to do whatever we need to do to get our product, our very good uh, rock lobsters, back into the Chinese market. Do you see this as legitimate or is this just keeping part Look, of it's Australia not, in the freezer for it's not up, longer? It's not up to us to make decisions about what rules um, China... Uh, applies for okay. the introduction of our, our, our products. Um, but what I want to see is uh, all of the restrictions lifted on our lobsters coming into, into China. Uh, and I'm confident uh, mm. that based on all of the discussions I've had, remember I've had eight meetings now, with uh, my uh, my Chinese, it's happening. Department. You've still got confidence this will happen. Yeah, look, I've got I've got confidence. We've Soon? we've we've this we've year? got. <laughs> People love a bit of rock lobster during Look, Christmas. Look, I've, I've, I've made a few predictions, so I'm reluctant. We to, love uh, predictions here. <laughs> all right, Make one. then soon. Soon. Uh, then soon by Christmas. Uh, by Christmas. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. We got there. Um, electoral reform. So a few interesting aspects to this: capping spending per seat. So do you have an idea what the cap would be per seat, and, and why? Why is this needed? This is needed um, because democracy is under attack all around the world right now. We've seen wars in uh, the Middle East, wars in uh, Europe. Um, we want um, our system, which is one of the best systems in the world, to be even better. Mm. Um, we need greater transparency. 
uh, we may need greater accountability, but we also need ordinary people to be able to run for parliament without having billionaires backing their campaigns. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is all about making sure that ordinary Australians get the opportunity to participate in our great electoral system. And it's all about ensuring that the Westminster system, which for 125 years at the federal level has been very, very good for Australia, mm. uh, continues. So can't you see advantage, when you say you need everyday people to be able to run, if there's a cap on a seat, say, of, I don't know, $2 million regardless, if an individual independent is running, that's their cap. If you're from a major party, you've got your $2 million plus the national spend. You know, people see ads from... Um, about the Prime Minister, about what Labor's doing, that's not actually a fair fight in terms of what exposure they get to ads in that situation, is it? This, this is all about um, trying to implement fairness into the, into the system, mm. transparency, transparency, accountability and limiting uh, the cost of, of elections. Co the costs are skyrocketing. At the last election, yeah. Clive Palmer spent $117 million. So now... I can understand, you know, his spend and um, perhaps wanting to stop that, but if he spends that across the nation, this wouldn't affect that, would it? If he's not spending it on one seat, he can spend whatever he wants. Well, just wait and see the uh, legislation. It's not uh, far away uh, now. So would you actually so, limit an individual's amount to spend regardless, so, not just a per seat basis? So we, we will come up with a comprehensive plan mm. to put downward pressure on the cost of Australian elections but making it clear that ordinary Australians can participate okay. in the electoral system without having millionaires or billionaires backing their campaigns. Okay. But you'd look at capping just an individual spend, not just a per seat, but a per election basis? We, we, we are going to have a very comprehensive right. um, plan to ensure that uh, there's that downward pressure okay. on the cost. What, well, I mean, the downward pressure doesn't help. It's not like a cost of living thing. It's, it's a political party thing. C can you... My earlier well, point, w would you concede if you're an individual and it's just you and you're running for one seat and you're running against a major party, that just counting your spend for the seat isn't really fair? That major party also has a national and a state spend? Um, well, uh, I, I think the scheme that we have developed is going to be... Um, groundbreaking, mm. it's going to be fair and uh, it's going to apply to equally to, to everybody uh, and I think you'll find that um, All right. on, on the basis of that, this will strengthen our democracy and not weaken. All right. I, I feel like probably I need the details to push this along, so I'm mm -hmm. sure you'll be back once we have the details there. I, I'd love to. Um, number of seats just finally. So Bob Hawke shifted it from 125 to the current number in 1984. Mm. We're long overdue to increase... Mm. I know this doesn't sound popular, mm. more politicians, mm. Mm. but the electorates are too big, aren't they? We're overdue to do, to, to do mm. this. Will this happen? Will you put a proposal for more seats during the next term of parliament? Um, look, uh, what I can say is we won't be putting up a proposal in this term what about of next uh, term? government. Um, look, we'll worry about the next term after the, uh, after the next election. Um, um, you're right, the size of these... Um, Electorates has dramatically increased mm. since Bob Hawke Are increased the numbers. Are they too big to manage now for an MP? Uh, they're a lot bigger. But, of course, um, as a government, we increase the number of staff uh, that uh, uh, politicians have to deal with their constituents. So we've recognised uh, that there is an issue okay. here, uh, but that won't be an issue that we're going to be dealing with in this, this set of reports. But is it on the table or are you saying the staff, more staff can manage a bigger electorate? What I'm saying is for this uh, term, we're not contemplating mm. any increase in the number of and politicians. And you don't want to be the minister to say more politicians, maybe? Well, I want to be the minister who says, for the moment, <laughs> uh, we are not proceeding with any proposals to increase the number of All Australian right. It'd make election nights harder, so I should probably stop asking for it, but <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm a masochist. <laughs> minister, appreciate your time today. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Tom. Nice to see you.